we're going to look at ohms in a resistor. Notice this uh, meter. Notice how it's got this here, which implies, I'll try to zoom in on it, alternating current. See the little squiggly on it? On the other hand, this one here implies direct current. So they try to put like a straight line on it. Uh, ohm icon. And this would be for amps. Notice what it says, 10 amps. Remember I was saying 10 amps? There's 10 amps, 250 milliamps, 20 milliamps. And here we're getting into microamps. So a little, little, little bit of current going through something. And this would be more like something that happens at home. As a matter of fact, I checked my furnace motor to see how many amps it ran. I think it ran about six amps. So I wanted to make sure that it wasn't burning out and stuff. So there you go. These are all the, the signs. I'm going to use a, it's kind of fun. I call it a alligator clip. Because notice it looks like an alligator. And there's a student, Hassan. He calls it crocodile. So call it what you will. They're really handy because I'm going to use this tip here, right there, and I'm going to put the crocodile on it. So, or alligator. Now I'm calling it crocodile. And I'm going to show you the meter. Now let me zoom out a little bit. I've got it on. I'll zoom back in. I've got it on 2,000 ohms. Um, you could put it on different ones like 20k, 20,000. 200,000 K. That's if you're using resistors that, are, that have that value. So you try to get close to the value that you know. In this case, it's 2,000. All right. Now notice this resistor. Okay. So I've got the allig alligator clip on that. I've got the meter on 2,000. Okay. This has got. It's hard for me to see, but I think it's red, black. The first two strips. We'll talk a little bit about the values. Now, remember I said plus or minus 10%. This happens to be one of the 1K resistors. Notice it says 1. That means it's um, infinite resistance. Now, if I touch this right here, it'll go down to 0. It's actually such a good meter that it's even uh, showing the resistance of the wire. And it's showing that the resistance is 0 0.003, almost nothing. Might as well be a short. That would cause a fire in your house if it was 10 amps. We're talking microamps here, so it's very little. So now I'm going to check out the resistance of this resistor. And in fact, what does it say? 982 ohms. What do you suspect it is? It is a 1K ohm resistor. All right? And the alligator clips really come in handy to hang on to stuff. We'll check another one, and then you can check the ohms on that. Could have been um, 1,040, could have been 950, plus or minus 10% roughly. Okay, now what we're going to do, we're going to check out this resistor. Um, they were given to me because it's really hard to read the colors. So what happens if you get a resistor and it's really hard to read the colors? Well, you just go like this and check it on your own meter. And what does it say? 328. It happens to be really uh, good, um, good components because it's 330 ohms. It's supposed to be 330 ohms. It's almost there. That would be considered very high tolerance, uh, often referred to as gold, because gold is plus or minus 5%, and silver is plus or minus 10%. So it's a really quite a good quality resistor. Okay, now we're going to do a battery. You recall what we said about a battery? A battery is... DC, direct current. So if you look at your meter, you'll see that that one says, it's got the little, let me just bring it in a little bit so you the camera. It's, it's alternating current. And this one here, uh, oh, this one here has uh, a, a, like a straight line, which means a direct current. So I'm going to do an AC check, and you'll see that I get nothing from it because it is an AC. So here it goes. It's supposed to be a 1.5 volt battery. So I'm going to switch it to uh, 200 microvolts 
Uh, I'll do it 200 volts. So you could put anything that's uh, under 200 volts here. Roll. Okay, so we've got it on alternating current, and Miss Tsung is touching both ends. Now we're getting a wrong reading. This actually happened to me once, and I couldn't understand why. We're doing the wrong thing. You do not measure alternating current with a direct current. So I'm going to switch it to direct current now. Both ends. Now we're getting a wrong reading. This actually happened to me once, and I couldn't understand why. We're doing the wrong thing. You do not measure alternating current with a direct current. So I'm going to switch it to direct current now. Now Ms. Chung is touching it, and what are we seeing? 1.5. Okay, That's an exactly. accurate reading because it's DC. Be very careful to pick DC direct current for batteries. That's good. And if you look at the um, on the meter, I'm trying to get the focus right. So it's about 20 again. volts. So anything under 20 volt will work. And again, if she's touching it, it says this battery is 1.57. So it's got a lot of juice in it, and it's very useful. So that's how you would use a voltmeter to check voltage. All right, now we wanted to show you something about current. We're actually going to use a different meter. We had a problem with the other meter. And notice it says 10 amps, 200 milliamps. Let me point to it. Notice it says 10 amps, 200 milliamps, 20 milliamps, 2,000 microamps and 200 microamps. Yeah. Okay, here we go. We got the, the, com, the ground, sometimes known as common, okay? And we got the uh, disconnect into milliamp. Uh, if you switch the meter to amps, I would pick 200 milliamps to figure out um, how much current will flow through this. Okay, now I'm going to switch the meter to 200 and I'm going to show you what's happening now. So right now it's indicating, it's very, very sensitive, so it's indicating it thinks there's 0.1 milliamp, but it's going to be more than that. So Ms. Tung is going to connect it with the 330 ohm resistor and watch the current that's flowing through the wires. Uh, see, there it goes. So that's three, it's fluctuating, right? So these electrons are, fluctu are flowing through the wires. So it's about 4.5 milliamps. So it's almost nothing, but still there's some activity. And that's why chips don't get that hot, but they can get uh, hot depending on how much, how many electrons are flowing. So there you go, your demo of amps. There you go, she took them off, and the flow of electrons stopped.